David Booher, and Drew Zucker have very bright futures in the industry, and I'll be keeping an eye out for future projects. I read a lot of middle of the road and even bad comic books these days. When I discover a book like IDW's Canto Number no. 1, it feels like it's all worth it. I'm very dissatisfied with the direction of DC Comics. Brian Michael Bendis' influence is consuming their publishing company. Marvel Comics is turning a corner, but they still publish only a handful of books worth reading. And even then, their constant pricing schemes, like the landmark Amazing Spider-Man issue 25, clocking in at a hefty $8 next month, make it damn near impossible to support a Marvel title for very long. I'm reading far more independent comics, even after the death of my former favorite publisher, Valiant Comics. So far, I've discovered a treasure trove of amazing series outside the big two, including Vault Comics' The Savage Shores, Ahoy Comics' The Wrong Earth, Boom Studios' Angel, and Image Comics' Die, 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 Spawn, and Die, to name a few. I don't read much IDW outside the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In my opinion, TMNT is the best managed franchise outside the big two. Last year's The Highest House was fantastic, but IDW hasn't brought anything new to the table that's wow me of late. Until I read Canto number no. 1. I had virtually no expectations going in. An all-ages book that claims inspiration from The Wizard of Oz and Dante's Inferno sounds equally interesting and confusing to me. Thankfully, I checked the book out. Issue 1 is a real gem with a ton of heart. This is one of my favorite reads of the year so far. I recommend this book to a wide audience. Readers of all ages will find Canto a deeply engrossing story. The creative team of writer David Buhar and artist Drew Zucker are relative newcomers to the industry. According to ComicBookDB.com, Buhar wrote comics Alien Bounty Hunter and Powerless in 2017 and completed some art on both projects. Amazon also lists novel No Return the Jerry Irwin story, UFO abduction, or covert operation in his writing credits. Artist Drew Zucker is a graduate of SCAD and works in both comics and commercial storyboarding. ComicBookDB.com lists short story American History Z in 2009's FUBAR, 2015's Dave, and 2016's The House in his creator history. David Buher and Drew Zucker are upstarts in the industry. Judging by the quality of Canto number no. 1, they both have very bright futures. Let's talk about the art from Zucker first. His character designs for the Ten Men are fantastic. They're relatively simple with their oversized helmets and smallish arms and legs. The Ten Men's eyes are very vibrant and bring the characters to life. Zucker does a good job placing unique items such as Kanto's red armband, his girlfriend's blue sash, and a mustache on the group's elder to distinguish them. The other creatures of Arcana are very creepy and feel dangerous without being too scary for the all-ages audience the book is tailored for. For a relatively new artist in the industry, he provides wonderful details and the scenes are energetic. Color artist Vittorio Estone is a terrific addition to the team. The beginning of the book has a very dark feel to it as readers are introduced to the world. It gets brighter towards the end of the story when Kanto begins his hero's journey. There's a wonderfully emotional scene with Kanto in his unnamed romantic interest in the second half of the book. She's injured and Kanto looks over her and cares for her. I really like more intimate moments like this without dialogue or exposition. The pictures tell the readers everything they need to know. You can see in Kanto's eyes he has a very heavy heart and is willing to do anything to help his friend. Drew Zucker has a tremendous feel for visual storytelling. This is a heartwarming scene that makes the reader feel for the hero and the journey he must go on. Zucker provides an excellent accounting of his artistic abilities in the pages of Canto No. 1. I rate the art 4 out of 5. Artist Drew Zucker does a great job creating the visual setting. David Booher's writing is equally excellent creating the world of Arcana. Being a brand new property, there is a good deal of world building in issue 1. The Tin Men are an enslaved race who spend their days chipping away, feeding the never-ending fires under Arcana. The slavers remove their hearts and replace them with clocks before putting them to work. 
The Tin Men work under horrendous conditions until their time runs out and their clocks break. They're forbidden from taking names, caring for one another, and feeling love. Kanto has a name, given to him by his yet-to-be-named love interest. The two are shown sneaking a brief finger touch, defying their slave masters. Kanto is a well-realized character who is very frightened of his oppressors, but also has a noticeable brave streak as well. Kanto discovers a group of ten men surrounding a slave severely wounded by the oppressors. They use their whips very judiciously on their small captives. This one is beaten so severely his clock is damaged beyond repair. The group's elder tries to save him to no avail. The ten men rush to bury their fallen comrade before the slavers return and burn his body in the furnaces. Arcana is a very bleak, dark existence for the small and snatchers slaves. They work tirelessly until their artificial clock hearts give out without any hope for deliverance. David Buhert does excellent work laying the foundation for Kanto's hero's journey. I rate the characterization in Kanto number one 4.5 out of 5. Buher does a great job all around crafting Kanto number one. It features a deeply engaging, well constructed plot as well. Kanto collects pieces of gold metal during his forced labor, fueling the furnaces beneath Arcana. The slavers discover his collection of precious artifacts and confront him. In the heat of the moment, his girlfriend calls him by his name. The guards accuse Kanto of giving himself a name before his unnamed love interest admits she gave him the name. The reprisal is swift and very harsh, leaving her clock severely damaged. The slavers warn if she can no longer work, the furnace awaits. After looking in on her, Kanto visits the group elder to inquire about her situation. The elder does his best with his limited materials and admits he can do no more to help her. Her time is quickly coming to an end. Distraught, Kanto offers his clock so she may live, but the elder reminds him the slavers have taken steps to ensure clocks can never be swapped. Heartbroken, he runs into the local forest, infested with dangerous wild creatures called Malarex. The elder tracks him down in the woods. He tells Kanto there is information he hasn't given him. There is a hermit who lives near a lake just beyond their borders. He knows where the ten men came from and why they are slaves. The hermit knows where the slaves store their hearts after they are removed. If Kanto wants to save his love, he must journey outside their borders and return her heart to her. Our hero's journey to defy those who keep his people in bondage and rescue the one who loves him enough to give him a name from certain death begins. David Boer does a fantastic job creating motivations, obstacles, and stakes for our character's journey. I rate the plot in Kanto number one, 4.5 out of 5. It was hard to know what to expect from an all-ages comic inspired by The Wizard of Oz and Dante's Inferno. It's certainly dark like the source material suggests, but never too dark for the intended audience. The images of the Tin Men being beaten are never too graphic, and most of the punishment is implied by the after effects. The slavers and Malarex creatures will likely frighten young audiences a bit, but nothing to scare off parents. I'm personally planning to read this story with my oldest son very soon. I was personally blown away by a fantastic story with excellent characterization from writer David Booher. Drew Zucker's artwork is dark and brooding, but the characters are cute enough for the all-ages demo. Both creators are operating at a very high level on this book. I rate Kanto number one, 4.5 out of 5 overall. The book receives my highest recommendation for readers of all ages. Parents and their children are sure to fall in love with Kanto and his story together. Although kids are not required to appreciate and enjoy this fantastic comic book and its tiny hero, David Booher and Drew Zucker have very bright futures in the industry and I'll be keeping an eye out for future projects. I read a lot of middle of the road and even bad comic books these days. When I discover a book like IDW's Canto No. 1, it feels like it's all worth it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter 
at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.